Hello and welcome to the 16th video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about working in paper space. Please note I'm using AutoCAD 2015 and as such there will be visual differences if you're not also using it. Let's go ahead and get started here. So the question is what is paper space? Paper space is a space that AutoCAD has given you that allows you to define a layout that you're going to use for your produced drawings. There are a couple different ways that we can switch between paper space and model space. Now if you look down at the bottom corner you'll see here we have this thing that says model. This lets us toggle on to model space. And right now you can see we're in model space. If you click the little drop down here, and this is where I'm going to have to move things a little bit. If you click the drop down menu, or it might, you might not have a drop down menu if you've got a full screen of, of AutoCAD, you'll have uh, multiple little tabs down here. And one of them will say layout one, one will say layout two. When you switch to a layout, you'll switch into paper space. So you have one model and as many sheets of paper as you'd like in paper space. For now, we're going to just stick with the two sheets of, of paper space that we have uh, defined by default. So there are three main components to paper space. The first one is the actual sheet of paper itself, and you can see that's defined by this white rectangle. The second one is the margin on the paper. And the margin, again, like any margin on any layout software, defines what is going to be printed and the boundaries of what's going to be printed. So anything outside of the margins won't be printed. Anything inside will be printed. The third thing here is any additional objects that you might have in your drawing. And this can be line work, this can be text, this can be blocks, this can be X-Refs. Uh, we're going to talk to, about X-Refs in another video. But um, the this can be all sorts of different stuff. One of the major objects that you're going to be using in model space is called a viewport, and that's what this is right here. A viewport is like a little window that you can set up to look at some element or, or all the elements of your model. So you'll see here we have our viewport that's centered right there. We can switch back to model space. I'm going to draw a circle, and you'll see when we switch back to paper space, that our circle shows up in our model. Now another thing we can do with viewports is that we can scale them. Or we can scale the objects that are inside of them to whatever scale we'd like to be seeing things at. So this is, this is where AutoCAD really gets functional because you can draw pretty drawings all you want and you can do those in whatever program you want, but getting them to be accurate and to scale is where AutoCAD really shines. So, for instance, if you double click inside this viewport, you'll notice we switch to the to be inside the viewport. The viewport gets darker on the outside, and you can see my crosshairs are limited to the viewport itself. And you'll see down here at the bottom we've got this scale. And right now it's set to some arbitrary scale that nobody cares about. But you can pick the scale that this goes to. So let's say for instance we want this to be a half inch to one foot. That's a half inch drawing right there. I'm going to go ahead and double click in here, press F7 to turn off the grid so you can see it. But that's exactly what that circle will look like on half inch uh, scaling to, on a sheet of 8.5 by 11. So if you notice here, we've got this circle. So now let's, let's draw another circle. Let's say this one has a radius of 6 inches, 6 units. Let's change that to architectural, make that inches. And we switch back to our view, out, our view, and you'll notice that comes in, and that's exactly the size that it should be at a half inch. Now, one of the things that you've probably noticed by playing around inside of viewport right now is that you have this issue. You'll have one of two issues. One is that you'll be zoomed in, you'll double click, you'll try and zoom out, and you'll infinitely be stuck inside of your viewport. This is really, really easily fixed. Just type PS, uh, PS, I can switch back to paper space, and you can zoom out again. So if that, gets, if that happens to you, that's one way to do it. In order to prevent that from happening, what you can do is you can set your, your um, scale. So let's say you want this to be half inch again. 
you can pan it around to wherever you'd like it to be and then you can actually lock the viewport so now you can't physically move the 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 view inside the viewport you can't zoom in and zoom out you can't pan around inside of it but you can pan the page around and you can zoom in and out of the page so that's really helpful for being able to to prevent issues like that from happening and again this is the, the solution for the other problem which is that you're in here and you go whoosh, and all of a sudden your stuff is gone or you zoom in and all of a sudden your your view is is off so again the solution to this is to pick your scale and then to lock your viewport and that's done so this is a sheet of eight and a half by 11, which is wonderful if you want to print on eight and a half by 11, but for a lot of work that's done in AutoCAD, you want to print on different sizes of sheets. So the question is how big is paper space and can you change the size of paper space? And that's a fairly reasonable question. The answer is yes. And that you can change the size of paper space and it can technically be as big as you'd like it to be. So let's go ahead and bring up the page setup manager you can do this by right clicking on the layout and going to page setup manager and we're going to go ahead and modify this layout so we're going to click modify and the first thing i'm going to do is select a plotter and what that will do is that will specify it will give me a, a different list of paper sizes that are specific to that plotting device now autocad by default comes with one called dwg to pdf and that's what we're going to be using in all of the videos that i'm going to do so you'll notice that the list of paper sizes changes. All of a sudden, we switch to an ANSI paper size, expand A, which is what we're on. I'm going to switch this to ARC expand D, 24 by 36. This is, again, this is what I plot on most of the size, most of the time at work, is a D-sized paper. And you'll notice here, this is in a landscape orientation, so it's gonna come off effectively 36 by 24, but the sheet size is 24 by 36. Uh, we have all sorts of different options here. One of them here is plot scale. When you're working in paper space, you always want the plot scale to be one to one because you want the the sheet of paper to be represented digitally the exact same way that it's going to plot physically. And you can specify what is going to plot. In this case, we want to plot the layout. And that should work just fine. We're going to come back to some of these other um, options at another time. So let's go ahead and click OK and go ahead and click Close and you'll notice our sheet is updated. And this is the viewport that we had on the sheet of 8.5 by 11 and you'll notice the viewport hasn't changed in size but you can do this really really easily by just clicking and dragging on the handles. So how many viewports can you have? Technically you can have as many as you'd like. There's no limit, as far as I'm aware of, as to the number of viewports that you can have. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this one. So let's pull that over and stick it right there. Now, why would you want to have multiple viewports? Let's say we have this instance in which we have these objects in our drawing, and we'd like to view these ones here at their half-inch scale, but we'd like to view these ones at 3 to 1. So let's go to our 3 to 1 and here it is. Now these are the exact same objects in model space. It's just the scale is different. And we can see that here if we go back to model space and I'm going to draw a line. This line is going to be orthographic and I'm going to make it 12 inches. So there's our 12 inch line. And switch back to our layout. You'll see it's it's there in both of them. There's the line, and there's the line, but the scale is, is set accordingly. Now this is also where annotative text comes in. We talked about annotative text and text styles and annotative blocks a little bit, and we talked about um, other annotative features that you could have, like things in tables and all that jazz. And this is where annotative text really shines. We're going to come back to that. So put a pin in that, get excited in advance for that, but we're going to come back to that and how that affects paper space and plotting. So let's go ahead and create a viewport. This is really easily done. You just go ahead and type viewport. And it allows you to 
pick a new viewport or you can pick some sort of layout that they already have pre-configured. Let's go ahead and just make a single viewport here. It's going to be a 2D viewport and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now you just pick a corner, pick another corner and in comes your viewport. And you'll notice it zooms extents on everything that's in there. This is not set to any specific scale. So let's say we want this to be an eighth inch scale. There's our eighth inch scale. The next thing I wanted to show you, the last thing I wanted to show you, is how to be able to control what's in your viewports by layer. So we're gonna jump back to our model here really quick and we're going to do some drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to jump to our layer property manager and I'm going to add a couple of layers really quick. So this one's just gonna be called one, We'll add another one here called two. This is just for the purposes of demonstration. And so you can tell which one's which. This one's going to be red. This one's going to be blue. Now we've got three objects here. So I'm gonna take this middle one and we're gonna go to properties on it. Change this one to be, pardon, layer one. And this one's going to be layer two. Oh, let's go ahead and jump back to our layout. I accidentally just made a third layout here. That's okay. And you'll see that these show up in all of the layouts that we're in. Now, let's say that we only want to see the big black circle on this view. What we can do is we can go in here and you can actually go into the, once you've, once you've activated the viewport by double clicking on it, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is lock it so that we don't accidentally pan around and change our scale. Then we're gonna head over to Layer Properties Manager and we're going to freeze all of the layers that are in this viewport that we don't want. So we don't want layer one or layer two. We went ahead and froze those. And you'll notice that they still show up in the rest of the viewports but they don't show up in this one. Oops. That layer, that viewport wasn't locked. So let's go ahead and reset that. Let's say this is gonna be a quarter inch and we'll go ahead and lock that sucker. Let's say in this viewport, we only want to see layers one and two, but we don't want to say see layer zero. So again, we do the same thing here. We go over here, we freeze the viewport under VP freeze and we have just that, those two objects showing up in this viewport. And in this one, we can leave everything on. So this is the power of viewports. Viewports enable you to be able to really deeply customize what's going to be on the sheets that you produce on your working drawings and uh, be able to control how things appear and where they show up and at what scale they show up. So that is viewports in a nutshell. We're gonna come back to viewports later on and talk more about things like how they interact with annotative objects and um, building a title block and all sorts of different stuff. But for now, that should get you started. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you thought this video was fantastic, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe. I'll bring you more of them. And I will see you in the next video.